Dr. Cabinet, and thanks for being on our show. Congrats on being our new superintendent. Well, thank you for having me on my on your show. I'm actually very thrilled to be here and even more thrilled to be the new superintendent. Yeah. First off, what are you a doctor of? So, I have a PhD, and it's in curriculum and instruction, and specifically when I wrote my dissertation, it's around literacy in grades 6 to 12, primarily writing, but there is that connection between reading and writing. Mm -hmm. um, what job are you doing now? So currently, I am in the district as the assistant superintendent. Most of the work I do is around curriculum. So there's that whole understanding of what do we teach, how do we teach it, how do we assess that children are learning. That's primarily my role right now. What made you want to go from that job to being superintendent? So I arrived in the Hopkinton Public Schools on June 1st, 2016. And uh, when I got here, you know, I obviously didn't know any of the administrative staff, so I didn't know all of your principals, I didn't know your teachers, but over the last couple of years, I have come to sort of understand that this is a community that is very much invested in learning and teaching. And sometimes yes. I like to say learning and teaching instead of teaching and learning. Mm -hmm. Because the most important thing that happens here every day is that students learn. And so I started to realize that this is a place where the parents, the students, the teachers, the administrators, everyone really loves learning. And I can't imagine a better place to spend my career. And so when Dr. McLeod announced that she was retiring, I thought this is an opportunity for me to continue the very good work that we have already started here. And I am excited to work with our principals and our teachers. Yeah. Um. Can you tell us a little bit about past jobs you've done? Sure. So before I came to Hopkinton, I was the K-12 curriculum director in the Oxbridge Public Schools. And in that role, I did exclusively curriculum. Like here, there are some other things that I do. So I will run committees and do you know, grant writing and that sort of thing. Um, before I worked in Uxbridge, I was an assistant principal in the Westboro Public Schools. I was an English department chair in the Westboro Public Schools, and I was an English teacher in the Westboro Public Schools, and an English department chair and an English teacher in the Auburn Public Schools, and I taught a little bit of Latin along the way. So that's what I did. I've been teaching for a very long time. Cool. Um, what do you think is going to be the best part of being superintendent? Hmm best part of being superintendent um, it will not be calling snow days right that yeah. will definitely not be the best mm -hmm. part but I think that the the best part of being superintendent is just to watch kids grow and I don't just mean academically right I think that we put a lot of emphasis on how we grow behaviorally socially emotionally and it's really nice to watch a kindergarten kid come into the Hopkinton Public Schools and then one day before we know it that student has changed so markedly and has become this person who's an exceptional reader, writer, thinker, mathematician, um, all of those things and then they graduate and they go off and do wonderful things in the world. Mm. Yeah, I, I actually was in Hopkinton when I was in kindergarten. Mm -hmm. And what grade are you in now? Um, sixth grade. See so that? I've been here for a while. You're halfway through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How about the toughest? The toughest? Hmm. Well, the toughest part really might be calling snow days. Um, I, I also think that we do have some, seriously, some challenges. Uh, we have a changing demographic in our town. We're going to be opening the Marathon Elementary School, which is really exciting, but yeah. also challenging, mm -hmm. right? Uh, we have looked at m maybe doing some renovations to the Elmwood School. So those are things that are very challenging. One thing I don't think people think about, so think about this for a moment. If we talk about the Marathon Elementary School, you've driven by there loads of times, right? Yeah. Think about the size of that piece of land yeah. as, composed, as opposed to the size of the piece of land that Center School is on. Center School has a little bit of sidewalk. Mm -hmm. Marathon Elementary is going to have... A lot. A lot. Yeah. So think about just clearing sidewalks when it snows or heating a much larger building or, you know, so all of those challenges come with opening a new building and it's exciting because there's mm -hmm. going to be a great new facility and lots of room for kids to spread out and learn. Mm -hmm. But 
I'm very excited for that too. My sister might be able to go there because she's in kindergarten now. Oh yes, yeah, so she'll be in first grade next year. She'll be at the Marathon Elementary School. Mm-hmm. Um, um, so that, and I also feel like the, the third challenge might be just keeping our scores exceptional, right? We do exceptional work now. We want to make sure that we are exceeding what we're doing yeah. always, right? There's always mm-hmm. room to grow. Um, how ha, has working with Dr. McCloud given you any tips or skills that you will be taking with you? Absolutely. So I would say that Dr. McCloud's leadership has been um, – like absolutely indispensable to me, right? She has taught me a lot of things about leadership, about the district in particular, about teaching and learning, about creating sound budgets. You know, I've done all of those things alongside her, so I am very grateful for all Mm -hmm. of the interactions she and I have had. Yeah. Um, What's the best part of the school system, and where do we need to improve? Hmm. I, I think the best part of the school system is the people who inhabit our buildings every day. And so I mean the administration, the teachers, the kids. I think that um, as kids come to school, they are academically challenged. I think that they are essentially happy in school. And I think we have very good programs to ensure that kids have that kind of psychological safety and academic safety to do really good things here. So I Mm -hmm. think that's the very best part of our schools. Um, I think that some of our challenges are, you know, maybe things that I've already mentioned, things like um, if we have struggling learners, how do we help them to succeed when we're opening new buildings and thinking about constructing or remodeling or renovating buildings, how do we get those things done? So those will be our challenges, and I I think we're ready to handle them. Yeah, I think so, too. Mm -hmm. Um, At... As you'll be calling snow days, do you think Mm. the student body should have a voice in calling school off? Well, I'm going to tell you a little known fact. When you're a senior in high school, every snow day that's called, you don't have to make up. Imagine that. You don't? No, because they graduate before the end of the year. So if in June you as a sixth grader are going those extra days because we called them off, by then the seniors have already graduated. So it might not be the best idea for me to let those seniors in high school have a say in it, right? Mm-hmm. I'm thinking that. Yeah. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't actually know that. I told you it's a little known fact, right? Yeah. Um, I think that there would be a lot of kids who every day would vote for a snow day. Yeah. Right? Um, I probably would. Yes. And sometimes I think you just have to watch the weather and be sure it's the right choice. So this year when we had the really big storm just a couple of weeks ago, we had a snow day one day on a Thursday, I think, and then we came in two hours late on a Friday. Yeah. Yeah. So if you come in two hours late on a Friday, you still get credit for the day even if you miss two hours. Mm -hmm. So I thought that that the model we used kept people safe on Thursday, kept kids safe on Friday, and got us another day of school in toward the calendar. So it was a good call. So we wouldn't have to make one out and make up one up in summer exactly yes so Mm -hmm. yeah I think calling snow days the other thing I think about it is no matter what decision you make there will always be someone who's not pleased with it right so you just do your best I I, 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 I was kind of disappointed when we didn't have a snow day on that day on that Friday yeah see that's an example of when kids might make a choice to stay home so I don't think we can include the, the kids in choosing snow days yeah yeah um, I hope that makes sense. Yeah. Um, which Hopkinson school do you think is the best? Oh, I think that they all have their strengths. I would be, I would be reluctant to say that one was the best. Which one do you think is the best? Uh, right now, H- Hopkinton Middle School, but that's because I'm in it. It changes every time I move to a new school. I think that same thing happens for me. When mm-hmm. I'm at Elmwood, I love being at Elmwood. When I'm at Center, I love being at Center. When I'm at the middle school, I love being at the middle school. Yeah. Right? So it depends on what building I'm in. I've been I enjoy to all, them all. all the schools you just meant, mentioned. Mm-hmm. I only haven't been to the high Well, I have been to the high school. Like, I haven't, what would you call it, like, done school in the high school. Yeah. You visited there, but you haven't enrolled. Yeah. Right? Pretty mm-hmm. soon. Thank you. Well, thank you for having me. This was lovely, and it was nice to meet you. Yeah. Nice to meet you, too.